the next two days that uh, we've shut down the plant. We've safely shut down the plant. Um, what that means is they've stopped the chain reaction. But what Fukushima taught us was that that doesn't stop the decay heat. There's still as much as 5% of the power from the power plant that doesn't go away when the plant shuts down. And um, for that, you need the diesels uh, to, um, to, to keep the plant cool. So if and when the plant loses off-site power, the diesels kick in to keep the plant cool and those diesels fire up no problem. Well, when I was at um, Northeast Utilities back in the 70s, we had a, a, a hurricane come in and um, th we lost off-site power. The plant scrammed and um, um, we had two alternative ways of producing power and one of them didn't work. So we were down to one diesel and um, we sat for six hours and um, on just one diesel until the, the, the uh, offsite power was restored and we could get uh, power into the plant to help with the cooling. It, it's, um, you know, the plant's designed to run on one, so um, of course the Nuclear Regulatory Commission would say everything was, was, was safe and sound, but I'll tell you, as the, as the plant operator, as the, you know, the, 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 the people running the plant, it's a little bit of a nervous time to realize that you're on your last fallback. Um, it's, um, you just hope that the last fallback keeps running. What should plant operators and managers in these companies be doing in preparation for Hurricane Sandy? It would be better if the plants shut down before they lost the offsite power. Uh, as a, a hurricane comes, uh, uh, comes in, uh, they'll know that, uh, that, that pretty soon there's going to be high winds and while the plant itself may withstand the high winds, the transmission won't. So um, it would be better if the operators, um, instead of waiting for the power to fail, shut the power plant down ahead of time. And, and the reason for that is that um, when a plant scrams, that's a sudden shutdown, that's a pretty severe jolt to the systems and it's a challenge to the safety systems. Whereas if the operators can bring it down slowly over five, six, seven hours ahead of time, uh, that's less of a challenge. Sort of the difference between slamming on the brakes and coming to a gradual halt. It, it's less stressful for the power plants. So I'm hoping that the, uh, there's 26 power plants in the East Coast that are in the r area where, where Sandy is, is likely to hit. And, and hopefully when, as, as, as the storm track becomes better defined, the plants that are, are, are most subject to it, likely New Jersey and Pennsylvania, um, um, preventatively shut down. And that would, of course, um, um, minimize the, um, the, the impact, the jarring to the nuclear reactor and its safety systems. So in the event of uh, a loss of offsite power, you know, we're talking about the diesels and it's quite possible they'll be down to relying on their last diesel to uh, keep the plant cool. And that keeps the reactor cool. From Fukushima, though, we know that uh, the fuel pool needs to stay cool uh, as well. How do the fuel pools factor into this? The nuclear reactors are not designed to cool the fuel pool off the diesels. Um, and and the, the theory has been that, well, pretty quickly we'll get power back and we'll be able to cool the nuclear fuel. So. Um, um, the reason they didn't cool the fuel pool with the diesels is because those pumps require a lot of power and you need bigger diesels. So no one wanted to buy bigger diesels so they basically have penciled the problem away and said that well we don't we don't need those diesels for uh, you know six, eight, ten hours so therefore we'll figure out a way of cooling the fuel pool even though we've lost off-site power. Um, uh, that that's uh, there's a problem there. There's a lot of problems there, as we learned at at, at Fukushima. The um, the the fuel pools, uh, especially this time of year, some of these plants have recently refueled, and they have hot fuel in their fuel pools. Um, the fuel pool churns off an enormous amount of moisture, even in the best of circumstances. And as it gets hot, if the diesels fail and the pumps aren't on, the the, the water will heat up several degrees an hour and start throwing off more and more and more moisture. Well, the buildings are not designed to handle high humidity. So um, uh, in addition to the, the, the fact that the fuel pool's warming up, you're throwing an enormous amount of humidity up into the, um, into the air as well. And the last thing is the, um, 
Um, this was a, a study done by Dave Lockman back in the 90s. Uh, he discovered that the fuel pool liner seams are not really designed to approach uh, boiling water. And in fact, they, uh, the, the, the stainless steel liners in the fuel pool may unzip if the water gets too hot. So uh, there's a lot of problems with allowing a fuel pool to, um, to overheat. And yet we've deliberately uh, built our nuclear plants so that um, the only fallback in the event the diesels turn on is to let the fuel pools um, begin to get warmer. And how long would it take for a fuel pool to boil? Well, it takes, depends on how much fuel is in the pool. All these pools are full. But more importantly, um, some of those reactors, those 26, have recently refueled, so they have hot nuclear fuel in the fuel pools. And in that case, it's, um, it's a couple of days. Mm-hmm.